So my own mother was lying and stealing from me. How do you fight to face someone who's destroying you? Sure, I feel bad for her situation, but I also can't forget how awful she made my childhood with her drinking. To BS, she is my mother, but I was unable to do anything for her or about her. On the other side, my dad started dating pretty quickly after the divorce, and within about six months, he had already moved in his new girlfriend, Taryn, 41F, and her 10-year-old son. They got married last year. I met Karen a few times when they were dating, and I wasn't a fan. She came across as kind of snobby and stuck up, always making little digs about my mom's alcoholism around me. She clearly looked down on us for that whole situation. I went away to college pretty soon after they moved in together, so I didn't have to deal with the new home situation much. But now that I am back for who knows how long while I try to find a career job, the situation is forcing me to live with Karen full-time. She keeps trying to be all buddy-buddy with me and build a motherson relationship, but I just don't want that right now. I know it has been years, but I am still processing my parents' divorce, my mom's alcoholism, and I don't even feel like I really know Karen after just a few meetings when they were dating. Whenever Karen tries engaging me in conversations and begins being all warm and friendly, I just give short replies to be polite, but make it clear I am not wanting to open up to her right now. She will say stuff like, how was your day? Or what are your plans for tomorrow? In a friendly way. And I just say fine or nothing much. She has also tried inviting me to join her and her son for activities like we are going to see a movie. You should come. So but I always reject. She sometimes gets this pouty look on her face when I give cold or short replies. And my dad has started saying I am being rude and disrespectful to Karen by not engaging more. He says she is just trying to build a relationship with her new stepson and I am avoiding her. But I am just not ready to open up and have a friendly relationship with this woman who I hardly know and who kind of looks down on my family's issues with alcoholism and divorce. I need more time and space first before, even trying to have a fake motherson relationship. Karen has made comments to me a few times too, saying things like I know this change has been hard, but I would really love if we could start getting closer. So I will be very hurt if you keep pushing me away. I am expected to just accept her as a parental figure after how things went down between my parents, so it is asking a lot very quickly in my opinion. My dad is now getting increasingly frustrated, saying I need to stop being an unpleasant child, and that Karen has done nothing but try to welcome me with open arms, but I am the one shutting her out for no good reason. He is accusing me of ruining his new marriage before it even starts by not giving Karen a chance. The fights over this between my dad and I have been getting worse recently. So Reddit, Ida here, should I really just totally open up and accept my dad's new wife as a parent right away? Or is it okay for me to keep her at arm's length? Update number one. Well, it has been about a month since my original post. A lot has gone down, so let me give an update. After all the drama and fights with my dad about not accepting Karen as a new motherly figure right away, I tried to make more of an effort over the following weeks. I was polite and had small talk with Karen when she engaged me, even forced a few smiles here and there. I could tell it made her happy, and she definitely tried taking advantage of on it to take our relationship to the next level quickly. Karen started ramping up her attempts to get closer and form a bond. She would come into my bedroom without knocking to chit-chat about her day, or ask tons of questions about my interests or hobbies. She invited me to join her and her son for stuff multiple times per week, like going to a baseball game, playing mini golf, etc. A few times she even made comments about us having more family time by all eating dinner together at the table instead of me taking my food to my room. I participated in some of the activities to be polite, but made sure to keep Karen at arm's length still. I didn't reveal any deep thoughts or try to form a close bond. I could see it was frustrating her, that we weren't instantly becoming buffs and having a Momsen relationship after she was putting in all this effort. Meanwhile, during this time period, I started seriously applying for jobs to get out of that house as soon as possible. My dad kept defending her attempts as her just trying to be a good stepmom, but it was really overbearing and uncomfortable for me. The other big thing on my mind was my real mom. She was staying with her sister currently as she got out of rehab and deals with her sobriety. I realized how badly I wanted to be there and supportive of my actual mother right now. I know she was dealing with alcoholism for many years and it caused a ton of trauma that I am still working through. But she is sober now and really needs good people around her for support. So, when I finally landed an okay entry-level office job after a few weeks of interviews, I immediately started looking for a cheap one-bedroom apartment to rent. The plan became to get settled, save up some money, and then have my mom come live with me. I told my dad and Karen about it one night at the dinner table, and they did not react well at all. Karen acted like I had slapped her in the face, saying she was so hurt that I was just going to up and abandon her and my dad after she tried so hard to welcome me into their home and build a family. She kept saying stuff like, I know your mom has issues but I am trying to be a good stepmom and look out for you here. Doesn't that matter at all? My dad blew up at me, calling me a mama's boy and saying I was making a huge mistake. He accused me of doing it all to purposely disrespect Karen after how welcoming she has been. 
things got really heated and ugly insults were thrown around about my mom and her alcoholism. Needless to say, I moved out over the next couple weeks into a little one-bedroom place. And two weeks ago, my mom officially moved in with me. She has been doing really well with her sobriety and going to AA meetings. Having her here with me and being able to take care of her and support her has been amazing. This is my real parent who needs me right now, not Karen. My dad has been furious, ranting about how I am ruining his new marriage by shoving it in Karen's face that I am choosing my drunk mom over her. But I don't care. Karen's constant pushness to force a motherson relationship after just meeting her, and everything with my parents' divorce was too much too fast. My mom is my actual parent and she needs me. I will always prioritize my real mom over my dad's new wife. So that's where I am at now. Living with my sober mom in my own place, cutting out a lot of the negativity from Karen's aggressiveness and my dad's dismissive attitude towards the alcoholism issues. I am just focused on my new job, my mom's soberness, and our life together moving forward. Keeping Karen at a distance for now was necessary for my own mental health. Two. Two more months have gone by since my last update about moving into my own place and having my mom come live with me after she got sober. Unfortunately, things have taken a really bad turn that I did not see coming at all. It started a couple of months ago when I first noticed some cash was missing from my wallet. I had taken out $100 from the ATM on payday, but then a few days later I went to pay for something and only had $60 left in my wallet. I shrugged it off at first, assuming I must have miscounted or spent money and forgotten about it. But then it kept happening every few weeks. I would take out cash, put it in my wallet, and within a matter of days there would be $20 to $40 mysteriously missing each time. After the third or fourth instance of this, I started getting really concerned that maybe my place had been broken into and someone was stealing from me. I mentioned the missing money to my mom during this period and she acted shocked saying we needed to be more careful about locking up and suggesting maybe someone could be taking it for my stuff at the office. She seemed convinced it had to be someone at my workplace stealing from my wallet while I was in the bathroom or whatever. At her suggestion, I started being super careful about securing my wallet and concealing the cash whenever I went to the office or out in public. But the money kept disappearing from my apartment in those couple day periods after I got paid. It was really starting to freak me out that someone could be entering my place and taking it. Then one day a couple weeks ago, I got home from work and went to take the trash out. As I pulled the bathroom garbage bag out of the can, I noticed at the very bottom was an empty small airline bottle of liquor. I immediately felt a pit form in my stomach. I hid the bottle and didn't say anything at first, but the next night, I noticed another $40 had gone missing from the cash I had just taken out a couple days prior. That was the final straw, so I got the empty bottle and put it on the kitchen counter, then confronted my mom and asked her point blank if she had been drinking again. She looked pretty stunned for a moment before fumbling out a no, of course not. You know I've been sober for over a year, why would you think that? I showed her the empty bottle and said well, then why did I find this in our trash? And why does money keep disappearing in $20 increments every few days after I get paid? My mom's face turned bright red as it finally clicked what I was accusing her of. She broke down crying at first, saying over and over I am so sorry, I am so sorry. After some more pressing for me, she admitted that yes, she had been pocketing cash from my wallet little by little to buy small bottles of liquor or individual cans or bottles at the gas station down the street. She said it started a couple months ago when she got tempted and gave in, and it turned into a frequent thing where she would sneak drinks whenever I was at work. I was absolutely stunned and heartbroken. After everything we'd been through with her alcoholism destroying our family, I'd given up living with my dad and his new wife to get my mom out of a bad environment. I trusted her sobriety process and honestly thought she had beaten this demon. To find out she had just been lying and hiding it from me while stealing from me the whole time really messed me up. I didn't talk to my mom for several days after that. I was so angry at her deception and breach of trust. She kept trying to approach me crying and apologizing, saying she would make it up to me and never drink again, blah, blah, blah. So how could I believe anything she said after all this? Part of me felt like such an idiot too. My dad had tried to warn me not to overturn my whole life for my mom's sake. Karen was right that my mom shouldn't be prioritized over having a stable home environment as much as that kills me to admit. I chose my alcoholic mother over them and now I've been burned again. At one point during our period of not speaking, my mom said through tears, I will just go stay with your aunt again if that's what you want. You were right not to trust me and my sobriety. I felt horrible hearing her say that, but I also didn't know what else to do. How could I continue living with her and providing her bash her if I couldn't trust her at all? The money stealing and secret drinking was just a recipe for disaster. After about a week of this extremely tense and awkward silent treatment, I finally broke down and told my mom we needed to have a serious conversation. 
I laid it all out, that her betrayal of my trust was devastating, that I gave up my living situation with my dad to help her get on her feet, and that her alcoholism had already put our family through so much trauma that I couldn't handle being lied to and stolen from anymore. She agreed that her actions were unforgivable. My mom explained that she had just gotten overconfident in her ability to stay sober alone. So when I wasn't around during work hours, she got sad, bored, and gave in to drinking again out of weakness. She swore up and down it would never happen again if I kept her in the apartment. Stupidly, I decided to give her one last chance and keep living together. But I made it crystal clear that any other drinking or shady behavior would result in me kicking her out immediately this time. No discussion. I said I couldn't handle being lied to again after everything. For about a month, things were okay. So my mom seemed to be doing well and not drinking from what I could tell. I was still keeping a very close eye on my money and counted it constantly. She was going to AM meetings semi-regularly too. Then about two weeks ago, I once again noticed $20 had gone missing from my wallet. I didn't say anything right away, but started paying very close attention. Sure enough, over the next week, small amounts of cash, always either $20 or $40, kept disappearing after I got home from work or went to bed at night. I didn't find any more empty bottles this time. But it was clear my mom had started drinking again and stealing to support the habit, despite her insisting she was sober. I felt so unbelievably betrayed and stupid for having trusted her. So just last week, I sat my mom down again and simply said I'm sorry, but you have to get out. I have given you way too many chances and watched you break every promise about staying sober. She tried denying it at first until I showed her the cash amounts that kept going missing. My mom openly admitted that she didn't have the willpower to stop drinking without professional help. She knows she has wasted any trust I had left. She has now gone to stay with my aunt again and enter an outpatient treatment program. As hurt as I am, I really do hope she can get healthy this time. Because as much as her addiction has put me through hell, I still love my mom. But I can't have her around me while drinking and stealing. It's just too destructive. So that's where I am at now, living alone again after getting so hopeful about helping my mom beat alcoholism. Trying to rebuild my trust funds after she stole a couple hundred bucks in secret. And honestly feeling really dumb for choosing her over living with my dad and Karen. As tempting as that situation was not. At least they could provide a stable, sober environment. This has all been a hard life lesson to learn. I'm just trying to move forward and stay hopeful my mom can get healthy, even if I may need to keep her at arm's length for my own well-being.